This morning, I'm not sure I'm going to finish it today. We might do it even for all the Sundays of this month. We'll be looking at the Believer's Dominion Mandate. The Believer's Dominion Mandate. You've been called to dominion. You've been called to dominate your world. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Believer's Dominion Mandate. Somebody say dominion. dominion. Say like you mean it, Dominion. Dominion in its simplest form is power, authority, or control over something or someone. It is the ability to request or command or expect a fulfillment of that appeal. To have dominion is to rule, to be in charge. The problem of the church is that God gave us dominion. We have boiled it down to religion. Three quarters of churches across the world, particularly here in the Western Hemisphere, demonstrate no power, show no power. Rather, uh, we prefer the religious part to wear certain clothes, sing certain songs, and we've already fixed how things will go. Today, in one church, it's called Quesagesima, the Sunday before Ash Wednesday. The prayer that shall be said today have already been written since a hundred years ago. The songs that will be sung has been written since a hundred years ago. The call of man, the call God has for man is to have dominion. Somebody say dominion. dominion. For example, even in the prayer of Jesus said, we should pray, give us this day our daily bread. And he said, for thine is the kingdom, the power. And what? Dominion is about kingship. It's about ruling. The body of Christ is called to rule, to have dominion. Dominion is about knowing who you are in Christ. And understanding that in you, through him, is the power to lay hold on the promises of God and possess them until the day of Christ. You're not called to be an apologist. You're not called to be a person who's a beggar. The prayer of believers is not supposed to be the prayer of mendicants, people who are begging. We were supposed to pray with power. We're supposed to worship with power. We're supposed to operate in the realms of dominion. Someone say dominion. Look at that verse again, verse 28. Then God blessed them. And God said, number one, be fruitful. Then take it to the next level. Multiply. You see, we have plywood. What is a plywood? It's wood, 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 wood. Pressed together. They put glue in the middle. Press so many uh, uh, slices of wood together to make plywood. So to multiply means to put blessings, 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 blessings. So God made you to be fruitful. And then he wants you to go the next level to multiply. Then he wants you to go the third level after you multiply to replenish. In other words, there are empty places on this planet. That's why he sent me. That's why he sent you. You were supposed to fill up some, some vacancy. Amen. Then after you multiply, he now says, replenish. After you've replenished, he now says you should replenish until you subdue. To subdue means, ay, 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 product from your hand should be found everywhere in the world. Even your enemies should buy from you. That's why while some guy in some Middle East, Arabian land may curse and say, burn down Ameriki. Yet he's wearing a jeans. He has been subdued by the people he's trying to burn down. He may say, burn down Ameriki. He's drinking Coca-Cola. Because he may not like them. They have subdued him by their product. Then God says, don't even stop at that point. Take it to the point of dominion. To dominate. Christians... You know, we have so boiled down Christianity and laced it with culture like cake. You know, sometimes some cakes, you don't really get to the real thing until you've removed the, the toppings, the icing. Uh, what else is there on top of it? Some Jamaican rum, 
Jesus have mercy. Before you get to the, <laughs> to the, to the cake down, down, down there. That's how Christianity is in some places. We are called to dominion, but we are dominated. We don't know how to pray the prayer of faith. We don't know how to take authority. We are not supposed to be dominated by sickness, by disease, by poverty. And yet that dominates us. In fact, when you look through the scriptures, what God says is that in the last days, he's going to hand over the, uh, the world to the church. But when you look in the church today, you don't see that. As I was driving in yesterday from the airport, there was a news from Daily Mail which says the church is begging the government for 50 million pounds to fix some church buildings. You are the one we are going to hand over the world to one day. But you are the one begging for aid. It just shows that someone have lost their rightful place. So in the next three Sundays, I'm going to be taking the time to challenge us to walk in dominion. That's your calling. That's your destiny. Genesis 1.28, which we just read, is the first word ever, ever, that came out of God's mouth. Verse 26 is a picture of the intentionality of God in the creation of man. He said, come, let us make man in our image. This disagrees with Charles Darwin. I am not an evolution that came out of the Neanderthal man and eventually became a walking man. From day one, I was created in God's image. I hope that's clear. And you've got to understand that, that. The purpose of God is for you to walk in his image. What is the image of God in man? Not nose, not ear, nose, and throat. Not uh, ears, as in natural ears, even though God hears. God, not, not eyes like human eyes, but capacity to live in the realms of God and to operate in the class of God. I said the class of God. I said the class of God. What is the class of God? He's a king. And he's a king of what? So who are the kings he's talking about? The natural royalty? No. Those who reign in him. So that's the journey we are on these three weeks. Are you ready for it? I said are you ready? So what is dominion? Dominion is understanding that you can do what God said you can do. You can do what God said you can do. And we are not supposed to fill that gap with an apology where we say, let thy will be done. Because you can pray wrong prayer or you can pray prayer at the wrong time. Prayer is like balls. There's basketball. There's soccer. There's lawn tennis. And there's golf. Some people think we just hold a stick. They, don't, they have to even teach you how to hold it. You don't bring the law of golf to basketball. You'll be a foul. You don't bring the law of basketball to soccer. You'll be a foul. So when you need miracle of healing, you don't say, let your will be done. It's prayer, but it's the wrong prayer. Is it making sense? That's the reason many of us are not walking in dominion because we are applying the right medicine for the wrong challenge. So God has called the believer to dominion. Dominion means to have what God said you can have and be what God said you can be. Spiritual dominion begins in you. You will never be able to exercise power and authority over anything until you have first Conquered yourself. So when we say dominion, it must first start with you learning to not let flesh dominate you, but the spirit of God dominate you. Galatians 5, 16, 18, 25. But Galatians 5, 16 says walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The verse 18, live in the spirit. Verse 25, walk, live in the spirit. So when you want to enjoy dominion, you first start by allowing the Holy Spirit to dominate you. So when he dominates you, you also have some capacity to see who you are in God. And the fact that you have 
dominion in God. And your dominion comes from God and you are not to be afraid to exercise it, but to walk in it. Somebody say walk in it. Say louder, walk in it. So whether the devil comes like Freddy Krueger to scare you, or he comes like Friday the 13th, or whatever way he comes, what you carry is bigger than who is trying to scare you. And I pray for somebody here today that this subject of dominion will be clear to you. Because the day you have a, a revelation, apocalypsis, and a clarity of who you are in God and what you have in him, there are some things you have allowed the enemy to do in your life they will no longer stand. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. So you will never be able to exercise power until you know who you are. Until you have what you have. Until you rebuke in, in the light of the word of God. Until you take authority because you know that demons have to bow because of what they know. They know that as a child of God... I am, I am supposed to walk in dominion. And when I walk in dominion, they don't obey because my name is Matthew, but they obey because of who I am in. I'm in Christ. So let's start by answering the first question. What is dominion? What is dominion? It is saying it and seeing it. That's dominion. Existing in dominion means existing in the realm where you say things, and they come to pass exactly the way you said it. Praise the Lord. A man of, called Ezekiel was taken to the Kidron Valley in Israel. If you stand on the Mount of Olives, right in front of you is the Kidron Valley. And it goes on from there until you get to the Dead Sea. It is 40 kilometers. In the revelation shown to Ezekiel, this valley was full of dry bones. It was a messy situation. People who have died a long time and their bones all scattered. Now no longer having strength. The sinews are not there. The muscle is not there. Then it therefore means that the body is broken. This man's head is here. His chest is over there. His femur bone is somewhere else. His uh, whatever kind of bone you have. You have tibia, fibula, somewhere, a metatarsals, metacarpals, another place. The man's uh, patella is somewhere else. His scapula is three kilometers away. Then God calls Ezekiel, come and prophesy that the thing will become a human being. When Ezekiel looked, he saw that unless I have authority in God, I cannot do it. Then God said, prophesy. And when he opened his mouth and spoke to the bone, he said, I saw something happen. A wind came. That is what we are supposed to do as the church. But uh, we are watching. And politicians have taken over our societies. And we are expecting gods out of our politicians. And they are unable to take us to the El Dorado we dream of. Because they too have problems. They don't have the answer. But they can't tell you. Because they're going to promise you. They'll tell you, I promise you, I will, make, I will make the sun to shine. I will make the moon to come out the right time. I will make daytime to become nighttime. Things they can never achieve. But when we come into the dominion power of God, there's nothing impossible. So, Ezekiel 37 verse 7. So he said, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling. The bones began to rattle. And the bones came together. Bone. <laughs> Remember how we described that man whose bones were scattered all over the Kidron Valley. Suddenly the bones came together. That is dominion. Somebody say dominion. Dominion, dominion means existing in the realm of absolute indomitability so that when the enemy says you will fail you stand on the word of God and you believe that you will not fail what is dominion it is living above defeat existing in the realm of practical invincibility we're not saying sickness will not come we're not saying challenges will not come but you know who you are in Christ I hope somebody is hearing me when you understand dominion, you know that you should not be in the place where you say, 
uh, anything comes and anything goes. K zira zira. Whatever will be will be. Your call to dominion is a call to take power, to exercise power, to operate in the class of your father God. It is a realm where no devil, no demonic spirit can dictate or should dictate the events of your life. I hope I'm preaching to someone. So from today, you will walk in dominion. What held down your fathers will not be able to hold you down. Please say a better amen. amen. What stopped your mother will not be able to stop you. Amen. What stopped your generation will not be able to stop you. Amen. You will excel. Amen. You will do well. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What is dominion? Dominion is being in control. Of the affairs of your life. Then God said. Let us make man in our image. In theology, we call it imago dei. In other words, man was made imago dei. He so disagrees with Alexander Charles Darwin. And the Bible says, according to our likeness. What is the likeness of God? God has capacity for immortality. You were made to live forever. God has the capacity to reason. You have capacity to reason. Lions don't reason. Elephants don't reason. Buffaloes don't reason. Crocs don't reason. Even your domestic dog can turn against you one day. They don't reason. They live on instinct. I was made to reason. I have capacity for choice. Nothing that God created has capacity for choice. This is what distinguishes man. Oh, glory to God. You were made in his image. Then the Bible says then, God breathed into them and said, be fruitful. In other words, in, in your dominion, in your dominion, God called you to be fruitful. It's more, than, it's more than having children. Actually, be fruitful means be seedful. You are full of seed. You are so, it's full of seed of ideas. That's why if you notice your life, you're in the bathroom, ideas come to you. You're in the kitchen, ideas come to you. You are in the rain. Ideas are coming to you. Because you are full of seed. You are full of ideas. You are not supposed to let them die. You are not supposed. The problem with our community is that we are buyers of other people's fruit. We are not showing our own fruit. From today your fruit will manifest. The grace you carry will speak. Will show forth in the name of Jesus. Somebody say I receive. So the Bible makes very clear we are called, we are called to have control over the affairs of life. What is dominion? It is having it always the way, <laughs> we are, the way God wants it through you, always. Whosoever, Mark 11, 23, 24, whosoever shall say to the mountain, mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. And does not doubt what he says. He shall have what he says. That's your calling. Now if you now operate in that calling. It's another thing. Because a man may not know. The capacity. He has. I pray for you today. You walk in that grace. You live in that grace. You will not settle for easy believism. In the name of Jesus. Too many people today have had their faith crushed even from the pulpit. When you have the preacher doubting Genesis, questioning Exodus, wondering if Leviticus is right, and thinking the book of Numbers cannot be numbered, then your faith is reduced. You have to know that God cannot make mistake. The word of God is true. And God made you so that you will operate in his class. And I pray for you today that this grace will rest on your life. Rest on your family. Somebody say, I receive it. In fact, my personal conviction is that when the church began to doubt whom God called them to be, that's why unusual creativities in our world today, but it's not in the church. It's not in the church. Some men are so creative, humble, they don't even live in the same kind of box like most of us live. They see possibilities where others don't see it. Now you are called to dominion. That's your calling. Don't live for less. And dominion has nothing to do with color. 
that chapter, Genesis 1, 28, did not talk gender. It did not talk color. It did not talk geography. There is capacity in all men to become whom God said they will be. And then when they get born again, oh my God, that's when they shall fully become all that Genesis 1, 28 is. Because when we lost it in Adam, we found it in Jesus. John 10, 10. He said, I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it how? The word life, there is Zoe. Zoe is the very embodiment of all that God is. Whoosh. The totality of all that God is, is how we were meant to operate. I'm praying for somebody this morning that you truly walk in dominion. Physical dominion, spiritual dominion, mental dominion, financial dominion. God will open doors for you. He will open your eyes to see possibilities. The things you can do will be shown to you. Shout a powerful amen. amen. You see, dominion has nothing to do with size. I love the design we have this week for, for our message. The lion is not the biggest, but it dominates. The lion is not the longest, but it dominates. The lion is not the tallest, but it dominates. And actually, the lion is not the most powerful. Hey, lions, feed, they fear African um, buffaloes. When the lion comes and the buffalo turns, the lion moves back. But he's waiting to use his capacity. The lion is still king, even though it's not as big as the buffalo. The buffalo will charge after the lion. But once the lion, the buffalo turns, the lion is going and saying, you don't know who king is? I am the kingy, kingy in this place. I am the king of this forest. The lion may not be the smartest. In fact, the lion doesn't do much work. Male lions... The one with a mare on his head, most times he's even sleeping all day until his hunting time. In fact, let me just tell you the secret. Most times the hunting is done by the females. Then the lion, the, the, boy, the guy now shows up. <laughs> have you guys killed something today? Let's have some meal. Jesus, man, because he's the king. Somebody say, I am king. I am king. You see, the, 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 the grace of dominion has nothing to do with physical presence. It has to do with ordination. Oh, you didn't hear me. It has to do with ordination. I don't, I don't want to go some places. The reason you have all this gender problem being taught in our school is because somebody is questioning the concept of the ordination of God. The concept of the ordination of God. Because once you can mess with the concept of ordination, that man is meant to rule his society so that he's even confused who he is. Am I a man? Am I a woman? Or am I... Because um... some people have four things at a time. It depends on where they find themselves. I know who I am. Praise the Lord. Dominion is having to do with God setting you up to rule in the affairs of life. Look at me. It has nothing to do with your command of language. Because some of us think, oh boy, for me to have command, I have to be able to speak a certain way. Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps that is governors to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors and over them one daniel <laughs> daniel was a foreigner but he carried the seed of dominion he was a foreigner and at this time babylon ruled the world as far as turkey as far as greece which was known as asia minor at that time, as far as the whole of Asia and the Middle East, and as far as North Africa. And yet Daniel, who came in through the backwaters as a slave, because you can enslave a man, but you cannot kill his capacity for dominion. Oh, I don't think I'm preaching to this. 
If you know who you are, then you know that a man can put shackles around your hands, but he cannot put it in your mind. It has to be a choice you make. You are called to dominion. That's whom God says you are. That's who you will be. Ah, dominion means having authority from one on high to reign in this world. Mark 11, 28 to 30. Mark 11, 28 to 30 means to reign on earth. And they said to him, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority to do these things? But Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one question. Then answer me and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Answer me. He couldn't answer because he knew that their problem was not the grace he carried, but the fact that he was exposing their mediocrity. Because one of the biggest things about religion is that religion is mediocre. Religion sells a lie and a false hope. Religion, for example, in one religion, told some people, if you kill people, we'll give you seven wives in heaven. As if they marry there. Heaven is sexless. So if you think you are going to continue with your wife there, forget it. She will have her own mansion. Don't think, oh, just the husband and wife in heaven. Forget it. Yeah, me see, we'll have our own house. I'll have my own house. I hope she will allow me to come and greet her, though. <laughs> Praise God. Religion, religion lies to you. Religion tells you that if you do this this way, then you are fine. Religion tells you your, your loved one is dead and they are in purgatory. They can't enter heaven yet until you bring the right offering. When did that become the way to enter heaven? Religion tells you, oh, you are not good enough unless you cover your hair a certain way or wear a certain trouser as if salvation is not about your spirit, it's about the physical. I hope I'm making sense. So Jesus asked the man, you're asking by what authority I do what I'm doing. You see the sick being healed, miracles being done, and you're saying by what authority? Okay, I ask you too, by what authority did you do what you're doing? This morning, somebody's been blessed. Amen. To walk in dominion is because we are redeemed to walk in dominion. Romans 5, 17, for if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. And so through Christ we have dominion. Someone say dominion. dominion. The Bible says Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 and 10. And they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God. We shall reign on us. This is the call of the believer. Somebody say, that's my calling. Please say it loud, that's my calling. But you see, if it's your calling, then occupy your calling. Take authority over the things that want to dominate you. In the next three Sundays, we'll be, laying, we'll be teaching on the believer's dominion mandate. Dominion mandates. you got to come to that understanding that God has called you to dominate your world or else if you don't, if you don't take care, look at me. Satan will sell you a certain sickness or disease. Next thing you are doing, you are googling and you are checking and the thing says uh, it happens to 50% of you of the world uh, it's genetically, if you have seen it in your grandmother and your grandfather it means you automatically have it and you just said, well, they said I shall have it because my, my grandmother have it. Hey! The day I gave my life to Christ, a new blood was introduced into my life. And that blood, the Bible says, speaks better things than the blood of Abel. There is poverty in my grandfather's line. It's no longer in my line. There's lack in my father's line. It's no longer in my line. The reason is I was introduced to another blood that speaks better things. Yes, let the doctor say, because it genetically manifests in people, it don't mean I accept. 
Because whatever I accept becomes my property. In, the, in, in your dominion, that's when you understand and you have a revelation of dominion, that's when you know what Christ has done for you. Listen, listen, listen. Christianity is not about showing up in, in prayer city every Sunday with our Bible. We hear a sermon. We go out there. We come back again next Sunday. It's about walking it every week. Walking it every week. A new flu comes into town. You don't say, oh, flu, flu is here. I'm getting ready for my own. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Or they say, oh, there's lack in the country. Uh, uh, there's no money. Uh, for example, I go a lot to my country nowadays. And the currency have just fallen by 60%. I made up my mind. I was born there, but I only arrived there. It was just a point of arrival. It was a bus stop. It's not my terminus. The economy will not determine my economy. My root is not taken from my nation. It is taken from the nation of Jesus. From the word of God. Oh, come on. Am I preaching to someone this morning? Glory to God Almighty. Because when you have your root in God, then you know that, look, I'm not denying the challenge is here. But the word of God says, God supplies all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19, Job 36.11, if I obey and serve him, I will live my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. 2 Corinthians 8.9, Consider the grace of Jesus Christ. He was rich. He became poor. That through his poverty, you might be rich. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound unto you in that you having all sufficiency in all things will abound unto all good works. So I'm not the politician who messed up the system. And I'm not going to let them mess up my destiny. My primary belief and source is the word. The Bible says, anywhere they plant me, I will be blessed. Even if there's lack, if I hold on to the word of God, God will supply. Amen. Oh, someone said dominion. dominion. Listen, if you begin to understand the concept of dominion, you can live in the worst place on earth and hold on to God and know that God has capacity to make things work for you anywhere on earth. Anywhere, if you believe in the supernaturals in this book, then you know that wherever I am, God can make things happen. Some kings went to fight war in the Bible. The Bible says they, they, there was no water. They had food, but no water. You can survive without food for like 30, 40, 50 days. Some guy during the days of Sinn Féin in Ireland, one guy survived 52 days before he died. He was doing protest. I don't know how you protest until you kill yourself because of, I won't die for nobody. No way, man. I'm not going to die for nobody. So you can be without food for like up to 52 days. The human body can only take three days without hydration. So this soldier, seven days now, they were about to die. So they sent for prophet Elisha. He comes, some king said, we know he's not going to say good things to us. We've been bad boys, bad boys. But then there was another king that said, because of you, I will give a prophetic word. He said, let them play music. As they began to play music, boom, power of God hit the place. And Elisha said, there will not be any rain. There may not be any dew. But about this time tomorrow, there will be abundant water for you to drink. Now ask me, where did he get the word from? He didn't see a vision. That is... You see, there are two kinds of prophets. Nabi, who teaches the word. And then Sa'ar, who sees a vision. And then when you are Nabi, Sa'ar, you see and you speak. He, he forth told. To forth tell is to speak a prophetic word and heaven backs you. Let me try to roll it. He is saying it so that heaven will say, Hey, Elisha, what do you want us to do? Not him saying, heaven, I want you to do this. It is I'd rather Elisha saying, this is what will happen. And heaven said, Elisha, is that what you want? Yes, that's what I want. So he said, about this time, tomorrow, there will be abundant. The Bible says exactly the hour he said, water began to rush. 
from the land of Edom. That's a whole message in itself. Edom is Mount Seir. Mount Seir and Edom is Esau. Esau is Herod. They hate the Jews. But when God is ready to bless you, he will make your enemies to be the provider of what you need. That is by dominion. Somebody is walking a new walk. You are entering a new season. Shout amen with fire. Sit down, sit down. Let me explain this dominion again. Let me explain this dominion again. Uh, so, so Jesus said in, in, in Matthew 16, he said, uh, whatever you bind where? Shall be bound where? No, 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 no. It should be bound in heaven. Then earth is bound. No, but Jesus said no. Heaven responds to you exercising dominion. Do you know there are times, I've heard some, some musicians from my country, they brought down prayer to elementary. Like, uh, what's the name of that uh, detective would say? That's elementary. Yeah, Sherlock Holmes would say, that's elementary. They brought down prayer to elementary. They say, God, come and help me rebuke the devil. God will look at you and say, me? No, it's your responsibility. Rebuke him and we will enact it. Oh, you didn't get it. If you carry a British passport, you go to Kenya, you are allowed to show at their airport, they say visa at the, at the on, on arrival. Or America, they give you Esther. I don't know if it's, yeah, Esther. But you know with your Esther, the guy who you stand in front of can say, sir, I refuse you entrance into the United States of America. You have a right to appeal. You see that guy standing there, for him refusing you, America refuses you. President Biden refuses you. The Senate refuses you. The House of Reps refuses you. There are, is it 50 governors or 52 governors? They all refuse you because that 22 year old standing in front of you, whatever he binds, America binds it. That is kingdom. Same thing with you. So when you say devil, take your hand off my son. Heaven will slap that devil that touches your son or daughter because you carry authority. From today, may you walk in dominion. May you live in dominion. Operate in dominion. In the name of Jesus, you will live in dominion. Walk in dominion. Operate in dominion. Enjoy dominion. Sickness will not conquer you. Lack will not conquer you. What your fathers, your mothers could never do. You will do, you will excel. Where they said you will never reach, you will get there. Shout amen three times. Amen. 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 Now listen, I'm not being judgmental. Sit down, sit down. But a man can only operate with the light available to him. So if the body of Christ, if a church, high church, low church, whatever, if it does not understand the concept of dominion, it will teach you religion. It will teach you religion. And what works is not religion. You need the power of God. And I'm telling you in this last day, we're going to see demons that have not been known are going to manifest in these last days. Tolerated by systems and governments. I've been a Christian 50 something years now. When I got born again, there are things you didn't hear of on earth. You didn't hear of them. But those demons, they come in. And they don't come wearing some leaves and and bearing some name like Mukumba. No, they come in, they are men in black, men in suits. The demons that show up now, man, they are men in black, man, you know what I'm saying? They wear nice suits. And they sell a lie to the world. And even the church is adjusting. That is the problem. Surrendering your authority. You see, when kingdoms come, kingdoms don't surrender. Even when you think you have gone away from a kingdom, they still enforce. Let me show you. In the United Kingdom, which one is the highest? Tea or coffee? Tea. You know, tea is, is more popular, isn't it? If you go to any commonwealth nation, nations 
that were ruled by the United Kingdom. Which one do you think is more popular? Tea or coffee? Tea. When you get to the office, what do they try to serve you? Tea. Because this kingdom ruled overtly and, and conversely and openly and in hidden way. A kingdom rules. A kingdom guides. A kingdom even gives you her clothes. Let me take you to my continent called Africa. Apart from the people of West Africa, everybody, everything below West Africa, they took their clothes from them and gave them suit and tie. That's kingdom. That's how kingdoms rule. They change you to what you should be. That's how you also should be. You should rule by the kingdom you carry. You carry the kingdom of God. Sickness should not dictate to you. Lack should not dictate to you. You should look and say, yes, my grandfather may have been broke, dirt, poor. And my father may be broke, dirt, poor. But a new blood has been introduced into my system the day I gave my life to Christ. I will not be what my father was. In fact, what my father could not achieve in all of his years in his career in the Nigerian army for 30 years. I believe in achieving it in, one, in, in 30 minutes because I carry the kingdom of God, the greatest kingdom. I, have Osha, I pray for you today. May you operate in dominion. May you walk in dominion. May you live in dominion. May you enjoy dominion. Shout a powerful amen. In this dominion, you are called to, for, sub, for things to be subject to you. Ephesians 2, 6 don't browse through the Bible like you are surfing through some, 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 some beach. Get to take what the word says. It says, and has raised us up together. And made us to sit where? Together. Where? In the heavenly place. Where? In Christ Jesus. So we are seated where Christ is seated. So whatever Jesus does is what you are supposed to do. What do you think Christ will do when he sees lack? What do you think he will do when he sees sickness? What do you think he will do when he sees curses? What do you think he will do when he sees limitation? He will take authority. He will break its power. And when the system questions it, he will stand on the word of God. He will say this is the final word. And the word of God must stand. So today, may you walk in dominion. May you live in dominion. May you operate by dominion. May you sit in the heavenly places. In the name of Jesus. That verse says that you have been seated in Christ. Let me show you what you are seated above. Chapter 1 verse 20, 21. Now tells us if you are seated with Christ, what is under you? What's under you? It says far above what? Which doctors, marabus, uh, obia. Is that what we call it in the Caribbean? Obia. Witch doctors, marabus, babalao, mukumba, whatever name you call them. Far above. Now there are some of you. Your dad is one of those things I mentioned. And you've never visited one because you are afraid. He that is in you. Far above principalities and powers and might and because one dominion must be greater than another dominion. Ah! And every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the one to come. I pray for you today that you will operate in the class and the calling that you carry. You will operate in dominion. Challenges will not dominate you. Battles will not dominate you. You will live in the anointing. You will carry the grace of God. You will carry the power of God. You will walk in dominion. Your prayer will be the prayer of dominion. Your confession will be the confession of dominion. I declare into your life today, when you wait on God, you will wait in dominion. You will not be a beggar in the affairs of life. You will speak into the realm of the spirit. You will bind, it shall be bound. You will lose, it shall be loosed. You will declare, it shall come to pass. 
your mouth will become the pen of a ready writer the things you call will become manifest i speak into your life today as your eye will see your ears will hear of the goodness of the lord in the name of jesus if you were blessed give god the biggest praise this morning give god the biggest praise give god the biggest praise stand on your feet and by way of summary look at it on the screen dominion establishes who you are in god number one dominion is having what jurisdictional authority when you are in the court of a judge they will say my court and then they'll look at the books once they find that there is a law that gives a penalty in fact if they feel it is not enough they will say i was this is the maximum penalty i can give you also have jurisdictional authority you are supposed to reign in life on this earth the world should know you are around from today that's what it will be Amen. it is your dominion is your capacity to rule your world to rule your world you're not supposed to live a life of of fear and timidity god has not given us what because that's one of the things that we draw dominion spirit of fear but dominion dominion it's, it's saying it and seeing it existing in the realm of absolute indomitability i'm not talking of one football club that called themselves indomitable something i'm talking of you now you are indomitable indomitable praise the lord it is being in control of the affairs of life it is being in command in one's field oh if you know how my heart bleeds because the body of christ is not occupying their proper place their proper place when we say thy kingdom do what that will be done you see the ultimate goal of god is to hand over this planet into the hand of believers but look into the church do we have many people who can hand over the world to to manage it and make it better because we have not walked in dominion like we should it is having the authority to reign in life it is reigning in every sphere not allowing luck to hold you down kill your dream if it requires raising your skill you raise your skill tell your neighbor to raise their skill because look at me look at me look at me god does not lie he won't give you what you don't have the skill for jesus wanted jesus told story he said a man was given talent he gave one five he said according to his skill and not now he gave two according to his skill too many people in church they think because I have tithed, then I will become this and that. They didn't know. I also need to raise my skill. I hope I'm making sense. I hope you are getting something this morning. Dominion is what establish who you are in God. Raise your hand. Say with me, I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I am whom God says I am. I have. What God says I have. I have dominion. I reign in life. In the affairs of life. I am not behind. I'm increasing. I'm prospering. It's getting better. I'm becoming victorious. The blessings of the Lord. They rest on my life. I'm blessed going out. Blessed coming in. Everything I touch. Is blessed of the Lord. I am doing well I'm excelling I'm achieving I have dominion in the affairs of life that's whom God says I am and that's how I will operate sickness shall not dominate me lack will not dominate me the limitations of life will not dominate me I break out of stagnancy I'm moving in the grace of God, in the favor of God, in the blessing of God. The greater one is in me. He lives in me. 
He walks with me. I prophesy. 2024 shall be a year of greatness. A year of walking in victory and prospering. In the name of Jesus. Now put your hands together and give God a praise. If you believe the word you've spoken, come and give God a praise. Malero Shakaya Telereba Rico Pake Kosele Renoma Kebaro Telare. Things have to change from today. In the name of Jesus.